Shankar. So, what is big data? Why Hadoop and Spark? And what are the drawbacks we see with the current databases, right? Drawbacks. Drawbacks with current databases. Hadoop and Spark advantages. Hadoop and Spark advantages. Yes. Hadoop and Spark components. Hadoop and Spark. Job market. Fine, yes. <clears throat> So in today's session, mostly I discuss about big data and how to pet. In the tomorrow session, I'll be discussing mostly on Spark and advantages, yes, features. What is big data? What is big data, right? The name itself saying, right? Huge volumes of data. You see the current, how the data is stored currently, right? Uh, data storage units like KBs of data, right? MBs of data. GBs of data, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, exabytes, right? Zettabytes, ettabytes, dotabytes, so on, right? Yes. So from TV onwards, we see like a huge data, right? Or big data, right? So do you think like, okay, you should have seen KBs of data, MBs of data, or even GBs of data, right? But do you think like a petabytes of data, is it getting generated in the current real world, right? one petabyte equal to right 1024 tbs already one tb is a large storage unit right do we think like uh, one petabyte right yes one petabyte equal to 1024 tbs so already one tb is a large storage unit right one tb is a large storage unit so here 1024 tbs forms a petabyte right it's from say petabyte so do you think like petabytes of data or exabytes of data is it getting generated in the current world if so examples of petabytes of data generation petabytes of data generation talk about a banking sector like, yes if you take example of any bank like sbi or hdfc right we see within the city we see hundreds of branches Within the entire state, we see thousands of branches, right? Within the entire country, lakhs of branches for SBI. Again, within each branch, we call say like millions of customers. Each customer making mil multiple transactions per hour, per day, per week, per month. For each and every transaction, need to be stored, right? So huge data. And forget about this, everyone aware about the social media like Facebook, right? Facebook. It has got uh, users not only within the country, it has got millions and trillions of users throughout the world. What is the data generated by Facebook in a minute? How many posts and videos are getting circulated? What should be the storage capacity to store all that videos and posts, right? So not like... Uh, you see, like it's uh, what is the data generated means not in MBs or GBs, like terabytes and petabytes of data. Not only like uh, Facebook, right? Today we have got many applications. Today, if we talk like many applications are generating data in petabytes, they are generating data in petabytes, right? Yes. One minute, if I talk about one minute of transaction, right? One minute transaction, right? In a minute, how many FB posts, Facebook posts, right? Yes. What is the data generated by Facebook? In a minute, how many Twitter tweets? What is the data generated by Twitter in a minute? What is the data generated by? 
google right google query function what is the data generated by youtube videos upload youtube videos upload right yes so huge data right what to store all the videos everyone creating their own videos and uploading in the youtube right what should be the storage capacity to store all the videos and everyone right has got millions and trillions of users using email messages right email messages each and every message need to be stored right what should be the storage capacity to store all these messages or bank transactions just now i was talking about the bank transactions or if at all like telecom transactions or like flipkart or amazon transaction right like e-commerce e-commerce transact everywhere we see like huge data right yes not in gbs or tbs petabytes of data all these applications storing petabytes of data right yes okay coming currently we have got currently we have got databases right currently we have got databases like uh, you see like databases like oracle mysql right we have got databases like oracle mysql db2 sql server right all these databases right they are used for oltp online transactional processing online transactional process for day-to-day -day operations right but if you see we have got some specialized databases we've got some specialized databases databases used for data warehouse purpose right like uh, we got uh, uh, teradata we got about like teradata and netija teradata netija vortica right yes these are used for olap for data warehouse purpose right dwh data warehouse purpose right online analytical processing olap online analytical processing right yes databases and specialized databases both are used for right Now these databases or specialized databases, they can handle data up to some extent, like uh, databases in GBs of data, specialized databases in DBs of data, right? But to handle petabytes of data, to handle petabytes of data, right? We doesn't see these databases cannot handle like petabytes of data, like as a solution to all these storage level problems, right? Not only storage and also processing level, right? We have got a framework like Hadoop for storage and processing. Later, I'll come back to this. What are the Hadoop and Spark services? But before that, if we talk about this, how this data is getting generated, data generations, and if you see data sources and data types, right? Yes. If you talk, if you take, for example, if you take this is your data available, this is your data, right? Available. This data got generated from the last 50 years. Assume that from 1973 to 2023, right? This is the data which got generated, right? If you compare this data, right? Yes, if you see from 2013 to 2023, last 10 years data comparison with previous 40 years, right? See, previous 40 years. Only like if you see, 20% of the data has got generated from the last previous 40 years and nearly 80% of the data what we see currently has been generated from the last 10 to 15 years, right? The reasons for huge data generation, especially from the last 10 to 15 years, right? Because of usage of technology, usage of technology, usage of smartphones, usage of internet, right? because of which huge data is getting generated from the last 10 to 15 years. And also, what are the main sources from where this data is getting generated? Mainly three sources of data, right? Three sources. 
if you go back to especially from last 10 to 15 years this data has been but if you see in 1990s or in early 2000s right the data was very less we have got floppy disk we used to carry data in floppy disk 1.44 mb right later you got compact disk dvds or like usbs right so day by day or uh, you see like data increasing the storage systems also increasing in the earlier stages of mobile phones like uh, just 128 mb storage you need to have in 2001 or 2002 at the earlier stages of mobile phones the internal storage was 128 mb or 256 mb right but now even 128 gb it's a very small storage so it's data increasing right so the storage systems also need to be increased from where this data is getting generated means mainly three sources right three sources of data you can say like a social data machine data and a transactional data right three types social data machine data and transactional data see what is social data data which got generated from social sites right like amazon like uh, facebook twitter all this right and uh, machine data means the data which got generated by reading or scanning the barcodes rfid chips so whenever you go to any shopping mall right for the items you purchase you will get huge data getting generated right by reading or scanning the barcodes such data we call like machine data and transactional data like day-to-day -day operations like bank transactions telecom transactions right and uh, what are the main types like three types right they are going to occupy three types three types of data three types of data like structured unstructured and semi-structured right structured data semi-structured unstructured right structured data semi-structured data and unstructured data data which is organized in the form of rows and columns in a structured format like uh, db tables like uh, excel files db tables database tables right everything we call like structured semi-structured means they are not fully structured they are not fully unstructured right like xml files json files right unstructured like short messages articles images videos all this comes as unstructured the biggest challenge is uh, like storing and processing this unstructured data today if you see most of the data which is generated occupying this unstructured format right we need to have proper storage and processing systems to handle this unstructured and semi-structured kind of data right if we talk about databases they can handle only structured data they can process the structured data right so uh, so hadoop is a kind of technology which can store and process this huge data right yes so as a solution to all the storage and processing level problems we have got a framework called hadoop we have got a framework called Hadoop. Hadoop is meant for two things. So, okay. So, Hadoop, if we have got a framework called Hadoop, Hadoop is meant for two things. Hadoop provides two services storage and processing, performs two things storage and processing. Okay. Storage plus processing, right? Yes. So, uh, if you take, if you talk about any technology, right, they perform either storage or processing. 
we talk about C or C++ or Java, .NET, right? All these, they are meant for processing. They're meant for processing, right? And if we talk about uh, Oracle, MySQL, DB2, all this meant for storage. They are meant for either storage or processing, but Hadoop performs both storage and processing. But for storage, does Hadoop use any database internally? No. Hadoop is going with a kind of file system called as Hadoop distributed file system. And for processing, we are going with an execution model called as MapReduce. And currently we are using Spark, right? Yes. So for storage, we are using this. For processing, we are using this, right? Both combinedly can store and process. And you may get doubt, right? When Hadoop is able to perform storage and processing, what is the use of the current processing and storage technologies, right? So do you think that they will be away from the market when Hadoop in the market where it can perform storage and processing? No. You need to know where this Hadoop and Spark is used for batch processing, for batch application, right? means millions and trillions of records go for Hadoop or Spark. For one record or two records, we don't need to go for this Hadoop or Spark, right? And go with databases. For online processing, for day-to-day -day operation, go with the databases for one transaction or two transactions. For millions and trillions of records, right? Go for Hadoop, right? Now, coming to this, right? Yes, understood, right? What is big data Hadoop, right? So if I take big data, huge data generation. If I take big data as a problem, huge data generation, then I can say like Hadoop as the solution for it, right? Or if you take like big data as a, talk like big data as a concept, Hadoop as the solution for it. Right, so now you may ask a query, why databases like Oracle is not used for storing Hadoop's data. Drawbacks with the current databases, right? Yeah, drawbacks with the current databases. So first thing, right? Most of the databases, right? Most of the databases, less storage, very less storage. They can handle in GVs or in TVs, right? GVs or TVs. Mainly, most of the databases, no parallel processing. No parallel processing in most of the databases, right? And uh, if volume increases, right? If volume increases, thing like speed decreases, right? Speed decreases. If volume increases, speed decreases. For example, to justify this, uh, Select total amount, sum of amount, right? Total amount from sales one. Sales one is the table, right? It's consisting of 10 records. Assume it has got only 10 records. And uh, see one more query, right? Select uh, sum of amount, right? Sum of amounts from sales two. From sales two, it has got like one lakh records. Total amount from sales one, 10 records. Total amount from sales two, 1 lakh records, right? Select, select sum of amount, total amount of, yes. One crore records. 10 records, 1 lakh records, 1 crore record. 10 records, 1 lakh records, and 1 crore record. So which query is going to execute faster among these three, right? Yes, everyone. Either 10 records or 1 lakh or 1 crore. Which record, which table like this or this or this? Which one is going to execute faster?
So the first query right executes faster because total amount of 10 records as compared with one lakh and one crore right. So query to query as volume increasing, speed decreases sir. And uh, if you talk uh, complexity increases, if complexity increases right, speed decreases, complexity increases, speed decreases. For example, select uh, sum of amount from sales one. Assume this is complex from sales one, right? You got some one lakh records. Assume that you got one lakh records. Next, see this select average amount. Select average amount from sales one, right? Yes. Select sum of amount from sales one, one lakh records, average amount from sales one, one crore records. So sorry, one lakh only as in sales one, same table, right? Select the standard deviation of amount, standard deviation of amount, right? Standard deviation of amount from sales one. So all this, right? has got like one crore records, sorry, one lakh records, same sales one only, right? One lakh records, which query executes faster among this three? Sum of amount from sales one, average amount from sales one, standard deviation of amount from sales one, right? First query again, right? Yes, because the average amount is a two-step process. First sum to be calculated, next average to be calculated. Standard deviation is a lot of internal processing required. So again, the first query executes faster as compared with the other two, right? So here, query to query, right? Query to query as well as this. Query to query as complexity increases, so speed decreases, right? Yes. And the major drawback with the databases, right? Databases can handle only structured data. Databases can handle only structured data they can handle only structured data cannot handle unstructured or semi-structured kind of data for example for example if you want to take reviews for a particular movie right so the table name is reviews user two, user three, hundred users, right? Hundred users, uh, review, right? Yes. Movie is good. First person saying movie is good. Second person saying movie is not good. Okay, for example, Think that they are giving reviews in the form of ones and zeros. First person saying one, second person saying zero, one zero. In this way, the <coughs> reviews are given in the form of ones and zeros. One means good, zero indicates bad. Can you write an SQL query to count the number of ones and zeros? Means how many saying it's good and bad, right? We can write an SQL query for this, right? Count aggregation. Select uh, review wise. Count review wise count from which table reviews table group by review review wise count from reviews group by review what is output right yes zeros and ones right one and zero what is the count ninety people saying the movie good ten people saying the movie bad right assume this kind of structural data okay but if the reviews won't be given in the zeros and ones right they give the reviews in their own text format first person saying movie is good second person saying movie is not good so in this way they are giving in their own text format they are giving 
the review in their own text to format, right? giving the review in their own text format, right? So here, 90 people saying movie is good and 10 people saying the movie is bad, right? Now, can you write an SQL query, right? For this, uh, if they are writing in the text format, how many people saying good, how many people saying it's not good, right? We cannot write a query even based on keyword count. If you try to see, right, if you want to count based on keyword, still it gives wrong computation because even not good has got good within it, right? So the major drawback with the databases can handle only structured data. But if you talk about this Hadoop advantages, right? Hadoop advantages. First thing, unlimited data storage. Unlimited data storage. unlimited data storage and secondly very high speed processing very high speed processing and uh, can handle all varieties of data can handle all varieties Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing can handle can handle all varieties of data. Right. Okay. Open source, no licensing required, right? Open source. Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, can handle all varieties of data, open source, no licensing required. Okay, unlimited data storage, right? Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, right? So if you see examples, Yahoo has conducted a test, right? Yahoo has conducted a test to check the speed of various databases. Uh, it has taken a table, Yahoo has taken a table, right, of 100 TV. It has taken a table of 100 TV, right, consisting of 1,024 columns. Task, right? Task. Yeah, task, right? Sorting based on 16 columns. Sorting based on 16 columns, right? What is the time taken by various databases? Time taken by various databases. First one, right? Uh, Oracle has taken nearly 3.5 days to process this, right? MySQL, right? MySQL, it has taken nearly six days to process it. Six days, right? And if you talk like specialized databases like Teradata used for data warehouse purpose can handle TBs of data just taken 4.5 hours, right? Another specialized databases like Netija, Netija, right? Right. It has just taken three hours to process this. But finally, Hadoop, right? Has just taken 3.4 minutes, 3.4 minutes. And latest version of Hadoop has taken just 1.2 minutes, right? If we talk about Spark, it will take seconds, right? Hadoop's Spark speed is more faster than Hadoop. So this is what the Hadoop Hadoop speed, right? Compared with other things where they have taken days and hours, Hadoop has taken just minutes of time. That is, Hadoop is proven in the market. 
processing point of view right and even in the storage point of view also auto page driven right so you may yeah processing point of view like very high speed processing today if you talk like most of the projects like etl kind of projects they're migrating towards hadoop and spark environment right yes you may ask like why databases like oracle why i got a serious query like why databases databases like oracle databases like oracle cannot support unlimited storage cannot support unlimited storage right yes why databases like oracle cannot support unlimited storage why only hadoop can perform why not this thing hadoop follows master and slave architecture single master and multiple slaves multiple slaves means a single master and multiple slave systems but here uh, there is a limitation for this for this limitations right databases and mem max limit max limit on the number of slaves max limit on the number of slaves like if you talk like oracle right if you can have maximum 256 slave systems 256 nodes are slaves right slave systems beyond that it cannot right it cannot support data once this 256 slave our systems gets filled it cannot support data further if you talk like mysql just it can support only 54 slaves supports only 54 slaves yes mysql express right mysql express it can support nearly 256 slaves and db2 db2 right it supports nearly like 256 slaves oracle mysql mysql express db2 sql server right yes sql server right like 256 slaves So they can support only up to 256. Beyond that, they cannot support, right? But we have got some specialized databases like Teradata, right? Teradata, it can support nearly 512 slaves, right? Systems for storing its data. And uh, Netija, Netija, right? It can also support, right? 512 slaves. Vertica. also can support nearly 5 to 12 slaves for storing its data okay mysql mysql express db2 sql server teradata netija vertica but teradata and netija now they are supporting nearly 1024 systems are slaves right to store its data and netija also supporting 1024 right 1024 slaves for storing its data right but still i cannot say like they are storing unlimited storage is possible no once they get filled they cannot support data further but but there is no limit there is no limit on the number of slaves on the number of slaves that hadoop can have right But there is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have. Unlimited number of slaves, right? So that's so Yahoo when first time implemented Hadoop. Yahoo when first time implemented Hadoop. Went with four thousand slaves. 4,000 slaves for storing its data. 
and currently it is going with currently currently yahoo using nearly 12000 slaves on notes rack for storing its data facebook rack facebook when first time implemented hadoop went with 8000 slaves for storing its data currently it is going with right currently it is going with 12000 slaves for store sorry 42000 slaves right 42000 slaves for storing its data right means there is no limit like uh, databases going with 256 or 512 but here they can go with the thousands there is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have yeah. right yes Vijay, uh, sorry uh, sorry to interrupt uh, can you please repeat uh, what is the slaves and nodes are yes yes that i'll be discussing right so once see Hadoop follows a single master multiple slaves master slave architecture So Hadoop, Hadoop or Spark follows right? master slave, not client server architecture, master slave. Single master means uh, these are multiple slaves. Slave nodes is there. This is master node. These are slave nodes. Group of nodes, CPUs. Group of nodes are CPUs. They are connected in a network. One master node and all are nodes are slaves nothing but system cpus one master node and multiple slave nodes so in hadoop if there is a file in hadoop data is stored in the form of files the data f1.txt think that your system or this slave one tv one tv one tv means each system storage is one tv one tv one tv slaves nothing but system nodes master node means it's a one system slaves and multiple systems right so each system capacity one tb my file size is two tb this two tb cannot fit into any of this file right any of this system it cannot be accommodated by any system right so in hadoop data is going to be split into smaller parts it is going to be split into smaller parts and will be first part in one system second one in another system this in another system means distributed storage you see the data is going to get distributed across multiple systems and processed by multiple systems two advantages what we can see huge the da huge data file can be accommodated secondly as it is distributed across multiple systems they are processed parallelly they are processed parallelly right yes They are processed parallelly. Okay, so we'll see very high speed, right? Because a single file distributed across multiple systems and is processed parallelly, very high speed. See, if work done by one system, work done by multiple systems, means work done by one person and work done by multiple persons. You can see that speed, right? Yes, that's what high speed. Okay. So these are the systems means Hadoop horizontally unlimited number of slaves horizontally you can keep on adding the systems or slaves right slaves means systems we can have any number of systems there is no limit but for databases there is a limit yeah how many systems can be and uh, Yahoo Facebook went with 42,000 systems for storing its data Initially, it was using 8,000. Currently, it is using this. Means there is no limit on the number of systems that Hadoop can have. Slaves, right? Can have, but there is a limit in other databases. So, storage point of view, it is proven, and the processing point of view, it is proven in the market, right? Yes. Understood, right? What is uh, Hadoop? Why Hadoop, right? And drawbacks with the databases, Hadoop advantages, right? And uh, uh, most of this, uh, if you Today, if you see most of the applications uh, generating huge data, so to be stored and to be processed, this big data tools are mostly preferred, right? Yes. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, now see this advantages and uh, as compared some tests were conducted by Yahoo to check the speed of this databases where Hadoop has taken minutes of time where other things they have taken like days and hours it has taken minutes of time and why databases like Oracle or this cannot support means they have limit on the number of players fine so if you see the and uh, if you talk about spark right spark a very high speed processing technology right used currently it uh, has got great demand in the market the tool has got great demand about this spark right the advantages its features all this i'll be demonstrating in the tomorrow session right but as what is the code structure right what is that course content we'll be discussing right i'll just show you what we'll be discussing as part of this course some hadoop component and spark right so like big data hadoop introduction why hadoop need of hadoop data sources and hdfs hadoop distributed file system we need to have the knowledge on this hdfs file system if it doesn't use databases as it got some drawback map reduce execution model right when hadoop and a scoop sql plus hadoop first two characters of this and last three characters of it form scoop right import or export operations how to bring the data how to pull the data from different databases processing it and after processed the data need to be again taken to databases import and export operations it's not for processing it's just for importing data and exporting data right and filtering transforming all this yarn yet another resource negotiator so from uh, hadoop to version onwards we got many architectural changes yet another resource negotiator and as a hadoop and spark developer you need to have the idea about at least one no sql database not only sql for schema less behavior random access no sql advantage is uh, record to record different number of fields or columns can be maintained in sql first record to last record same number of columns need to be maintained right but in nosql my first record with three fields second record with five fields third record with 10 fields right record to record different number of fields can be maintained right and as part of our course are we discussing hbase one nosql database hbase and hbase data modeling and crude operations and uh, high end hbase integration and next the important uh, hadoop component like hive which is used for data warehouse for we use a language called hql here loading data and making the data structured and creating tables internal tables external tables we working with unstructured xml json data working with url weblog data unions joins udf udaf udtfs right non partition partition table indexing bucketing partitioning static partitioning dynamic partitioning right and now coming to this size spark right spark with python so up to now that is what the hadoop components that we'll be discussing right now pi spark pi spark real time use cases pi spark session pi spark context spark context paralyzed repartitioning broadcast variables pi spark rtd computations rtd uh, persistence or persistence features options pi spark core computation and increasing the number of partitions groupings and aggregations single grouping single aggregation multi grouping multiple aggregations group by key reduce by key various actions and transformations right various one by one actions and transformations count by key count by value sort by key so one by one inbuilt transformations and actions we no need to write huge codings so various inner join partition pi spark sql data frames right making the da data structured using maps rtds pi spark uh, rtd pi spark show row class select collect uh, with column renamed where order by group join union one by one all this uh, apis right with uh, working examples pi spark sql functions aggregate functions window functions date functions json right read write 
and built-in functions right when expression lit translate overlay two times time percentage rank count distinct row number rank dense rank type lit right all this and PySpark external sources working with sql statements hive integration working with csv json transformations in auctions on data frames narrow and wide transformations handling nulls writing data back to external sources deployment modes local and cluster PySpark applications stages and tasks driver and executor replying spark applications to cluster streaming integration with kafka and PySpark machine learning library right so all this uh, in brief right in depth we'll be discussing about entire data analytics with hadoop and spark different apis given and with many working examples right fine yeah so uh, i'll be briefing about the spark features advantages how it is used in the real time right in the tomorrow session right so this is what the course content so every session will be video recorded you will be getting the recorded videos of it <coughs> and the clear notes will be provided right fine so this is this, this is a weekend batch yes give me a minute give me a second right i'll just come back with your queries uh, so on saturday it will be like two to two and a half hours sunday it will be two to and a half hours right five hours per week so only on Saturday and Sundays, it's a weekend batch. Yes. Fine. So it's totally of 12 weekends, right? 12 weekends in depth in brief, we'll be discussing and uh, all the softwares, everything I'll be provided, right? In through Google Drive and videos also will be getting to Google Drive. Notes I'll be forwarding to mail, right? Fine. If you've got any queries, you can go with your queries and uh, tomorrow also you can attend the session, right? At same time at 5.30. To see more on this mostly on spark i'll be briefing you right before i go with that basics of this big data right yeah any queries you have got you can go ahead with your queries right uh sir uh, can we can we can we have an end project i mean live project something like that so so at the last i'll be showing you the flow right on this okay uh, so do we need to have java and python programming knowledge before uh, continuing with this course so here, uh, PySpark means you need to have Spark with Python implementation. You need to have the knowledge on Python, basic Python, right? Yes. So uh, the course is of 12 weeks, right? And the fee structure is 12,000, right? For which uh, constitutes both Hadoop and uh, Spark, right? Previously, they were two separate courses. Now both we come and we are giving for an offer, right? It's like 12,000 for both like 12 weekends, course for three months. Right, and uh, the Hadoop, and especially for Spark, total implementation goes in Python, right? And uh, anyone wants to also, because first uh, uh, one month or one month I'll be discussing on Hadoop, right? Where we won't touch any Python there. So by the time we can update with Python, by the time when we start Spark, right? So people, and if you want uh, Python also, I got, I'll be also handling some Python batches, right? So those who want uh, Python also along with this, right? They, they, the package will be like 15K, right? Along with Python. You can join any of my Python batch, right? It is going to be started. So, yes. So first one month, we'll be having discussion on Hadoop where we use uh, We'll be discussing about this Hadoop component. By the time we start, you can just update with Python. If anyone not aware about Python, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any other queries, right? Yes. Uh, sir, uh, since uh, I've already joined uh, Python just uh, yesterday, uh, so can uh, can it be clubbed with this course, my Python course? Okay, if you're, yes, if anyone already done, right? So I, it was said, right? It's a 15K is the fee, right? So if already, if anyone attending Python, if they want to get updated, right? 15K is the total package. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank normal you. normal only for Hadoop and Spark, if you want, if you already had knowledge on Spark, it's 12K is the fee structure, right? Okay, thank you. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and and I just wanted to understand sir the type of projects uh, like 
we will be doing a project and mm. uh, uh, we'll like at the end of this course or in the last two weeks or three weeks uh, what type of uh, projects will be exposed to or we will be doing on our own can we do on our own the projects once we complete the course yes yes totally you'll be getting command on this uh, total uh, hadoop and spark related apis right when to use what at for what task what to be performed right so we will we'll be it, during the course itself right we'll be designing many data flows right spark especially it's a data flow language right so many uh, data flows will be designing right many with many working examples okay thank you uh, sir, uh, you have a separate classes for Python, or it is it, it is there in the class? So no, no, no. A separate uh, timings will be there. Uh, means uh, this Tuesday at seven a.m. in the morning, I'm starting a Python batch, right? Morning seven a.m. Right. Uh, when, when, when it is going to start? On thirty first of this month, after three days. Okay. At morning seven a.m. Right. At morning seven a.m. There is a Python batch. I'm going to start morning seven a.m. Right. Okay. And thirty uh, first of this month, and again fourteenth, uh, fourteenth of this uh, next of for two weeks, right? There is one more batch in seven p.m. Right? I'm going to start. Uh, sir, is, is there no uh, batch for weekend on weekend because I'm working profession. Weekdays is not possible for me. So be, most of the weekends I'll be dealing with uh, Spark and Scala and Spark by Spark batches are there. And this data analytic batches mostly this i'll be dealing with but uh, people okay there are some people previously who have joined right if he doesn't have knowledge on python even uh, if you attend the sessions that's fine otherwise following the videos that's fine if you're unable to attend but there are no weekend batches but whenever you have got any queries people will be joining and we'll be asking the queries right any one or two days right if unable to attend. yes uh, no, we, no, no, no weekend batches for Python. Weekend, no weekend batches for Python, but uh, for this only we have got the weekend batches for this. So this timing will not change, right? Or it, it, no, no, no. It this will timing, change. This, this timing won't change. I have got other uh, batches, right? Other time. This will okay. be. Okay. Yeah, because this is convenient, so that's why if it changes, then my schedule will change. Yes, yes. Okay. So are we yes. covering the installation steps also? What is that? Installation steps. Yeah, yeah. How to install on Windows? How to install on Linux? And how to work on this Anaconda, Jupiter, Spy, Spider, PyCharm? All this I'll be discussing, right? Okay. And uh, I heard like the Sig and uh, Yarn is out of scope, so nowhere there is. Sig, uh, uh, we are not we are not discussing Sig, right? Okay. And what about deployment like Yarn so architecture? So that is also no more. So. So. Airflow, uh, something kind of thing. Pig, pig, yeah, Apache pig is, uh, we are not discussing that pig, Apache pig is not discussed. So oh, other okay. components. So, yarn, yarn, yarn. so yarn architecture will be discussing, yeah, only the architectural part. Okay, and okay. deployment oh. means like uh, nowadays they are using Airflow, so, uh, so instead of yarn, so nowhere they are using yarn architecture also. So at the so, last time, I'll, I'll be providing that knowledge on that. Okay. So, and if you, uh, yes, uh, yes. so you are covering the airflow also, right? So the dep into the deployment option. So this is what you can once again just to go through all this course content, right? It will be you will be getting this course content to your mail IDs. So all this uh, in-depth knowledge on PySpark, all the APIs with many working examples, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, this PySpark, how it will differ from working in Databricks uh, that is in cluster mode? Yeah, that also, if I, how to work with the Databricks, that also I'll be discussing, right? Okay, okay. So, and uh, what about Delta Live Tables? What is it? No, no. Delta Live Tables? Uh, no, no, that is not covered here. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks. Okay, fine. Any other queries, right? Anyone? Sure. Sir, how to pay the fees? I mean, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, right? In the during the session, they will be. So you'll be getting a mail, right? Whatever mail ID you joined, you'll be getting a mail, right? They'll be giving the entire uh, the payment processing procedure okay. right? through. Okay. 
okay and also tomorrow in the during the class in the chart panel they will be posting the uh, payment options everything right in the chart panel okay fine okay fine so i'm stopping for now so we'll continue tomorrow same time at 5 30 you can follow the same link to see more on this right tomorrow most of my discussion will be on spark pi spark right introduction on this pi spark and the features the advantages all this right so i'm stopping for now thank you all for your time thank you Vijay? yes yeah thank you hello yeah any query yes uh, can you hear me yeah i can hear you already i opted for this for and with data science and with uh, tech okay so already yeah. you that tech you, op on... you, you opted for python data science and with uh, seven batch this seven batch okay seven. okay just yes yes people who are it's already said that right? only for hadoop and spark it is like 12k and if anyone already doing python here in this uh, durga shop and uh, like if anybody wants to update with python right the fee structure is 15k if you already have done paid for this python and if you're updating with the python right so your total package will be 15k i'm um, about the timing of the classes timing will be right like every every week okay. on saturday let me say that uh, mm -hmm. that the weekend batch only if this is a this is a weekend batch right this is a weekend batch only no 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 can you hear me yes yes i can hear you right no no you said that full stack will be on weekend batch only the 7 p team batch there so this for uh, so all this all these are weekend batches i'll be running from morning to evening right many weekend batches on scala spark with scala and big data analytics right? many weekend batches yes okay I'll back to you later. Fine, okay. So I'm stopping here. We'll continue tomorrow, same time at 5 30, right? Yeah. So good evening, all. So myself, I'm Vijay. I hold nearly like 17 plus years of experience, which includes nearly eight plus years of experience in Hadoop and Spark and environment, right? So as part of today's demo, I'm going to cover the following topics. So before I start, can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear, whether the screen is visible or not, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Screen is clear. Yes, Thank you. So what is big data why hadoop and spark and what are the drawbacks we see with the current databases right drawbacks drawbacks with current databases right Hadoop and Spark advantages. Hadoop and Spark advantages. Yes. Hadoop and Spark components. Hadoop and Spark. Job market. Fine. Yes. <clears throat> so in today's session, mostly I discuss about big data and how to pet. In the tomorrow session, I'll be discussing mostly on Spark and advantages, yeah, features. What is big data? what is big data right the name itself saying right huge volumes of data you see the current how the data is stored currently right uh, data storage units like kbs of data right mbs of data gbs of data gigabytes terabytes petabytes exabytes right zettabytes ettabytes dotabytes so on right yes 
So from TV onwards, we have like huge data, right? Or big data, right? So do you think like, okay, you should have seen KBs of data, MBs of data, or even GBs of data, right? But do you think like a petabytes of data, is it getting generated in the current real world, right? One petabyte equal to, right? 1024 TBs, already one TB is a large storage unit, right? Do we think like a one petabyte, right? Yes, one petabyte equal to 1024 TBs. So already one TB is a large storage unit, right? One TB is a large storage unit. So here 1024 TBs forms a petabyte, right? It forms a petabyte. So do you think like petabytes of data or exabytes of data, is it getting generated in the current world? If so, examples of petabytes of data generation, petabytes of data generation. Talk about a banking sector. Yes. yes. If you take example of any bank like SBI or HDFC, right? We see within the city, we see hundreds of branches. Within the entire state, we see thousands of branches, right? Within the entire country. Lacks of branches for SBI. Again, within each branch, we call, say like millions of customers, each customer making mil multiple transactions per hour, per day, per week, per month, per year. Each and every transaction need to be stored, right? So huge data. And forget about this, everyone aware about the social media like Facebook, right? Facebook. It has got uh, users not only within the country, it has got millions and trillions of users throughout the world. What is the data generated by Facebook in a minute? How many posts and videos are getting circulated? What should be the storage capacity to store all that videos and posts, right? So not like, uh, you see like it's, uh, what is the data generated means not in MBs or GBs, like terabytes and petabytes of data, not only like, uh, Facebook, right? Today we have got many applications. Today, if we talk like many applications are generating data in petabytes, they are generating data in petabytes, right? Yes. One minute, if I talk about one minute of transaction, right? One minute transaction, right? In a minute, how many FB posts, Facebook posts, right? Yes. What is the data generated by Facebook? In a minute, how many Twitter tweets? What is the data generated by Twitter in a minute? What is the data generated by Google, right? Google queries, right? What is the data generated by YouTube videos upload? YouTube videos upload, right? Yes. So huge data, right? What To store all the videos, everyone creating their own videos, and uploading in the YouTube, right? What should be the storage capacity to store all the videos? And everyone, right, has got millions and trillions of users using email messages, right? Email messages. Each and every message need to be stored, right? What should be the storage capacity to store all these messages? Our bank transactions, just now I was talking about the bank transactions, or if at all, like telecom transactions, or like, Flipkart or Amazon transaction, right? Like e-commerce, e-commerce transaction. Everywhere we see like huge data, right? Yes. Not in GBs or TBs, petabytes of data. All these applications storing petabytes of data, right? Yes. Okay. Coming currently, we have got currently we have got databases, right? Currently we have got databases like uh, you see like databases like Oracle. MySQL, right? We have got databases like Oracle, MySQL, DB2, SQL Server, right? All these databases, right? They are used for OLTP, online transactional processing, online transactional processing for day-to-day -day operations, right? But if you see, we have got some specialized databases. We have got some specialized databases databases used for data warehouse purpose, right? Like uh, we got uh, Teradata, we got about like Teradata, and Netija, Teradata, Netija, Vortica, right? Yes. 
these are used for OLAP the data warehouse purpose set DWH data warehouse purpose right online analytical processing OLAP online analytical processing right yes databases and specialized databases both are used for right Now these databases or specialized databases, they can handle data up to some extent, like uh, databases in GBs of data, specialized databases in DBs of data, right? But to handle petabytes of data, to handle petabytes of data, right? We doesn't see these databases cannot handle like petabytes of data, like as a solution to all these storage level problems, right? Not only storage and also processing level, right? We have got a framework like Hadoop for storage and processing. Later, I'll come back to this. What are the Hadoop and Spark services? But before that, if we talk about this, how this data is getting generated, data generations, and if you see data sources and data types, right? Let's talk. If you take, for example, if you take this is your data available, this is your data, right? Available. This data got generated from the last 50 years. Assume that from 1973 to 2023, right? This is the data which got generated, right? If you compare this data, right? Yes, if you see from 2013 to 2023, last 10 years data comparison with previous 40 years, right? See, previous 40 years. Only like if you see, 20% of the data has got generated from the last previous 40 years and nearly 80% of the data, what we see currently has been generated from the last 10 to 15 years, right? The reasons for huge data generation, especially from the last 10 to 15 years, right? Because of usage of technology, usage of technology, usage of smartphones, usage of internet, right? Because of which huge data is getting generated from the last 10 to 15 years. And also, what are the main sources from where this data is getting generated? Mainly three sources of data, right? Three sources. If you go back to, especially from last 10 to 15 years, this data has been but if you see in 1990s or in early 2000s, right? The data was very less. We have got floppy disk. We used to carry data in floppy disk, 1.44 MB, right? Later you got compact disk, DVDs, or like USBs, right? So day by day, uh, you see like data increasing, the storage systems also increasing. In the earlier stages of mobile phones, like uh, just 128 MB storage, you need to have in 2001 or 2002 at the earlier stages of mobile phones the internal storage was 128 mb or 256 mb right but now even 128 gb is a very small storage so it's data increasing right so the storage systems also need to be increased from where this data is getting generated means mainly three sources right three sources of data you can say like a social data machine data and a transactional data right three types social data machine data and transactional data see what is social data data which got generated from social sites right like amazon like uh, facebook twitter all this right and uh, machine data means the data which got generated by reading or scanning the barcodes rfid chips so whenever you go to any shopping mall, right, for the items you purchase, you will get huge data getting generated, right, by reading or scanning the barcodes. Such data we call like machine data and transactional data, like day-to-day -day operations, like bank transactions, telecom transactions, right? And uh, what are the main types, like three types, right? They are going to occupy three types, three types of data.
three types of data like structured unstructured and semi structured right structured data semi structured unstructured right structured data semi structured data and unstructured data data which is organized in the form of rows and columns in a structured format like db tables like excel files db tables database tables right everything we call like structure semi structured means they are not fully structured they are not fully unstructured right like xml files json files right unstructured like short messages articles images videos all this comes as unstructured the biggest challenge is uh, like storing and processing this unstructured data today if you see most of the data which is generated occupying this unstructured format right we need to have proper storage and processing systems to handle this unstructured and semi structured kind of data right if we talk about databases they can handle only structured data they can process the structured data right so uh, so hadoop is a kind of technology which can store and process this huge data right yes so as a solution to all the storage and processing level problems we have got a framework called hadoop we have got a framework called hadoop hadoop is meant for two things so okay so hadoop if we have got a framework called hadoop hadoop is meant for two things hadoop provides two services storage and processing performs two things storage and processing okay storage plus processing right yes so um, if you take if you talk about any technology right they perform either storage or processing if you talk about c or c++ or java dot net right all this they are meant for processing they are meant for processing right yes and if you talk about uh, oracle mysql db2 all this meant for storage they are meant for either storage or processing but how do performs both storage and processing but for storage does how do use any database internally no Hadoop is going with a kind of file system called as Hadoop distributed file system and for processing we are going with an execution model called as MapReduce and currently we are using Spark right yes so for storage we are using this for processing we are using this right both combinedly can store and process and you may get doubt right when Hadoop is able to perform storage and processing what is the use of the current processing and storage technologies right so do you think they will be away from the market when hadoop in the market where it can perform storage and processing no you need to know where this hadoop and spark is used for batch processing for batch application right means millions and trillions of records go for hadoop at spark for one record or two records we no need to go for this how to pass spark right and go with the databases for online processing for day-to-day -day operation go with the databases for one transaction or two transactions for millions and trillions of records right go for hard right yes now coming to this right yes understood right what is big data how to right so if i take big data huge data generation if i take big data as a problem huge data generation then i can say like how to pass the solution for it right or if you take like big data as a talk like big data as a concept 
Hadoop has the solution for it. Right, so now you may ask a query, why databases like Oracle is not used for storing Hadoop's data? Drawbacks with the current databases, right? Yeah, drawback with the current databases. So first thing, right? Most of the databases, right? Most of the databases, less storage, very less storage. They can handle in GBs or in TBs, right? GBs or TBs. Mainly, most of the databases, no parallel processing. No parallel processing in most of the databases, right? And uh, if volume increases, right? If volume increases, Thing like speed decreases, right? Speed decreases. If volume increases, speed decreases. For example, to justify this, uh, select total amounts, sum of amount, right? Total amounts from sales one. Sales one is the table, right? It's consisting of 10 records. Assume it has got only 10 records. And uh, see one more query, right? Select uh, sum of amount, right? Sum of amounts from sales to from sales to it has got like one lakh records. Total amount from sales one ten records. Total amount from sales to one lakh records, right? Select uh, select uh, sum of amount total amount of Yes. One crore records. Ten records, one lakh records, one crore records. Ten records, one lakh records, and one crore records. So which query is going to execute faster among these three, right? Yes, everyone. Either 10 records or one lakh or one crore, which record, which table like this or this or this, which one is going to execute faster? So the first query, right, executes faster because total amount of 10 records as compared with one lakh or one crore, right? So query to query as volume increasing, speed decreases, right? And uh, if you talk, uh, complexity increases. If complexity increases, right? Speed decreases. Complexity increases. Speed decreases. For example, select uh, sum of amounts from sales one. Assume this is complex from sales one, right? You got some one lakh records assume that you got one lakh records next to see this select average amount select average amount from sales one right yes select sum of amount from sales one one lakh records average amount from sales one one crore records so sorry one lakh only assume Sales one, same table, right? Select the standard deviation of amount, standard deviation of amount, right? Standard deviation of amount from sales one. So all this, right? Has got like one crore records, sorry, one lakh records. Same sales one only, right? One lakh records. Which query executes faster among this thing? Sum of amount from sales one. Average amount from sales one, standard deviation of amount from sales one, right? First query again, right? Yes, because uh, average amount is a two step process. First, sum to be calculated, next, average to be calculated. Standard deviation is a lot of internal processing required. So, again, the first query executes faster as compared with the other two, right? So, here, query to query, right? Query to query as well as this query to query as complexity increases speed decreases right yes and the major drawback with the databases right 
databases can handle only structured data databases can handle only structured data they can handle only structured data cannot handle unstructured or semi structured kind of data for example for example if you want to take reviews for a particular movie right so the table name is reviews user 2 user 3 100 users right 100 users uh review right yes movie is good first person saying movie is good second person saying movie is not good okay for example think that they are giving reviews in the form of ones and zeros first person saying one second person saying zero one zero in this way the <coughs> reviews are given in the form of ones and zeros one means good zero indicates bad can you write an sql query to count the number of ones and zeros means how many saying it's good and bad right we can write an sql query for this right count aggregation select uh, review wise count review wise count from which table reviews table group by review review wise count from reviews group by review what is output right yes zeros and ones right one and zero what is the count 90 people saying the movie good 10 people saying the movie bad right assume this kind of structured data okay but if the uh, reviews won't be given in the zeros and ones right they give the reviews in their own text format first person saying movie is good second person saying movie is not good so in this way they are giving uh, in their own text format they are giving the review in their own text format right giving the review in the own text format right so here 90 people saying movie is good and 10 people saying the movie is bad right now can you write an sql query right for this uh, if they are writing in the text format how many people saying good how many people saying it's not good right we cannot write a query even based on keyword count if we try to see right if you want to count based on keyword still it gives wrong computation because even not good has got good within it right so the major drawback with the databases can handle only structured data but if we talk about this hadoop advantages right hadoop advantages first thing unlimited data storage unlimited data storage unlimited data storage and secondly very high speed processing very high speed processing and uh, can handle all varieties of data can handle all varieties unlimited data storage very high speed processing can handle can handle all varieties of data right okay open source no licensing required right open source
unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, can handle all varieties of data, open source, no licensing required. Okay, unlimited data storage, right? Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, right? So if you see examples, Yahoo has conducted a test, right? Yahoo has conducted a test to check the speed of various databases. Uh, it has taken a table, Yahoo has taken a table, right? Of 100 TV, it has taken a table of 100 TV, right? Consisting of 1024 columns, task, right? Task. Yeah, task, right? Sorting based on 16 columns. Sorting based on 16 columns, right? What is the time taken by various databases? Time taken by various databases. First one, right? Uh, Oracle has taken nearly 3.5 days to process this, right? MySQL, right? MySQL, it has taken nearly six days to process it. Six days, right? And if you talk like a, Specialized databases like Teradata used for data warehouse purpose can handle TBs of data just taken 4.5 hours, right? Another specialized databases like Netija, Netija, right? Right, it has just taken three hours to process it. But finally, Hadoop, right? has just taken 3.4 minutes, 3.4 minutes. And latest version of Hadoop has taken just 1.2 minutes, right? If you talk about Spark, it will take seconds, right? Hadoop's Spark speed is more faster than Hadoop. So this is what the Hadoop, Hadoop speed, right? Compared with other things where they have taken days and hours, Hadoop has taken just minutes of time. That is Hadoop is proven in the market, processing point of view, right? And even in the storage point of view also, Hadoop is prevent, right? So you may, yeah. Processing point of view, right? Very high speed processing. Today, if you talk like most of the projects, like ETL kinds of projects, they're migrating towards Hadoop and Spark environment, right? Yes. You may ask like why databases like Oracle, why? I have got you see this query right why databases databases like oracle databases like oracle cannot support unlimited storage cannot support unlimited storage right yes why databases like oracle cannot support unlimited storage why only hadoop can perform why not this means hadoop follows master and slave architecture single master and multiple slaves multiple slaves means a single master and multiple slave system but here uh, there is a limitation for this for this limitations right databases and mem max limit max limit on the number of slaves max limit on the number of slaves like if you talk like oracle right it can have maximum 256 slave systems 256 nodes are slaves right slave systems beyond that it cannot right it cannot support data once this 256 slaves our systems gets filled it cannot support data further if we talk like mysql just it can support only 54 slaves supports only 54 slaves yes mysql express right mysql 
express it can support nearly 256 slaves and db2 db2 rack it supports nearly like 256 slaves oracle mysql mysql express db2 SQL server right yes SQL server right like 256 slaves right so they can support only up to 256 beyond that they cannot support right but we have got some specialized databases like Terra data right Terra data it can support nearly 512 slaves right systems for storing its data and uh, netija netija right it can also support right 512 slaves vertica also can support nearly 512 slaves for storing its data okay mysql mysql express db2 sql server teradata netija vertica but Teradata and Netija, now they are supporting nearly 1024 systems or slaves, right? To store its data and Netija also supporting 1024, right? 1024 slaves for storing its data, right? But still, I cannot say like they are storing unlimited storage is possible. No. Once they get filled, they cannot support data further. But, but there is no limit there is no limit on the number of slaves on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have right but there is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have unlimited number of slaves right so that's so Yahoo when first time implemented Hadoop Yahoo when first time implemented Hadoop. Went with 4,000 slaves. 4,000 slaves for storing its data. And currently it is going with currently. Currently Yahoo using nearly 12,000 slaves or nodes right for storing its data. Facebook right. Facebook, when first time implemented Hadoop, went with 8,000 slaves for storing its data. Currently, it is going with, right? Currently, it is going with 12,000 slaves for store. sorry. 42,000 slaves, right? 42,000 slaves for storing its data, right? Means there is no limit like a, databases going with 256 or 512 but here they can go with the thousands there is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have yeah. right yes. Vijay, uh, sorry uh, sorry to interrupt uh, can you please repeat uh, what is the slaves and nodes are yes yes that i'll be discussing right so once see Hadoop follows a single master multiple slaves master slave architecture so hadoop hadoop or spark follows right master slave not client server architecture master slave single master means uh, these are multiple slaves slave nodes is there. this is master node these are slave nodes group of nodes cpus group of nodes are cpus they are connected in a network one master node and all are nodes are slaves nothing but systems cpus one master node and multiple slave nodes so in hadoop if there is a file in hadoop data is stored in the form of files the data f1.txt think that your system or this slave one tv one tv one tv means each system storage is 1 TB, 1 TB, 1 TB. Slaves nothing but system. 
nodes master node means it's a one system slaves and multiple systems right so each system capacity 1 tb my file size is 2 tb this 2 tb cannot fit into any of this file right any of this system it cannot be accommodated by any system right so in hadoop data is going to be split into smaller parts it is going to be split into smaller parts and will be first part in one system second one in another system this in another system means distributed storage you see the data is going to get distributed across multiple systems and processed by multiple systems two advantages what we can see huge da huge data file can be accommodated secondly as it is distributed across multiple systems they are processed parallelly they are processed parallelly right yes They are processed parallelly. Okay, so we'll see very high speed, right? Because a single file distributed across multiple systems and is processed parallelly, very high speed. See, if work done by one system, work done by multiple systems, means work done by one person and work done by multiple persons. You can see that speed, right? Yes, that's what high speed. Okay. So these are the systems, means Hadoop, horizontally unlimited number of slaves, horizontally you can keep on adding the systems or slaves, right? Slaves means systems, we can have any number of systems, there is no limit, but for databases there is a limit, yeah. how many systems can be, and uh, Yahoo Facebook went with 42,000 systems for storing its data. Initially, it was using 8,000, currently it is using this. Means there is no limit on the number of systems that Hadoop can have, slaves, right, can have, but there is a limit in other databases. So storage point of view, it is proven, and the processing point of view, it is proven in the market, right? Yes, understood, right? What is uh, Hadoop, why Hadoop, right, and drawbacks with the databases, Hadoop advantages, right? And uh, uh, most of this, uh, if you, Today, if you see most of the applications uh, generating huge data, so to be stored and to be processed, this big data tools are mostly preferred, right? Yes. <clears throat> One second. Now see these advantages and uh, as compared, some tests were conducted by Yahoo to check the speed of these databases where Hadoop has taken minutes of time, where the other things they have taken like days and hours it has taken minutes of time. And why databases like Oracle or this cannot support means they have limit on the number of slaves. Fine. So if you see, uh, and uh, if you talk about Spark, right? Spark, a very high speed processing technology, right? Used currently, it uh, has got great demand in the market. The tool has got great demand. About this uh, Spark, right? The advantages, its features, all this I'll be demonstrating in the tomorrow session, right? But as what is the code structure, right? What is that course content we'll be discussing, right? I'll just show you what we'll be discussing as part of this course. Some Hadoop components and Spark, right? So like Big Data Hadoop, introduction. Why Hadoop need of Hadoop data sources and HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system. We need to have the knowledge on this HDFS file system. It doesn't use databases as it got some drawback. MapReduce execution model, right, when Hadoop. And uh, Scoop, SQL plus Hadoop. First two characters of this and last three characters of it form Scoop, right? Import or export operations, how to bring the data, how to pull the data from different databases, processing it and after processed the data need to be again taken to databases import and export operations it's not for processing it's just for importing data and exporting data right and filtering transforming all this yon yet another resource negotiator so from uh, hadoop to version onwards we got many architectural changes yet another resource negotiator and as a hadoop and spark developer you need to have the idea about at least one no sql database not only sql for schema less behavior Random access, no SQL advantage is uh, 
record to record different number of fields or columns can be maintained in sql first record to last record same number of columns need to be maintained right but in nosql my first record with three fields second record with five fields third record with 10 fields right record to record different number of fields can be maintained right and as part of our course i'll be discussing the hbs one nosql database HBS and HBS data modeling in crude operations and uh, high end HBS integration. And next, the important uh, Hadoop component like Hive, which is used for data warehouse, for we use a language called HQL here, loading data, making the data structured, and creating tables, internal tables, external tables. We're working with unstructured XML, JSON data, working with URL weblog data, unions, joins. UDF, UDAF, UDTF, right? Non-partition, partition table, indexing, bucketing, partitioning, static partitioning, dynamic partitioning, right? And now coming to this PySpark, right? Spark with Python. So up to now, that is what Hadoop components that we'll be discussing, right? Now PySpark. PySpark real-time use cases, PySpark session, PySpark context, Spark context. Paralyzed repartitioning, broadcast variables, PySpark RTD computations, RTD uh, persistence or persistence features options, PySpark core computation, and increasing the number of partitions, groupings, and aggregations, single grouping, single aggregation, multi grouping, multiple aggregations, group by key, reduce by key, various actions and transformations, right? various one by one actions and transformations, count by key, count by value, sort by key. So one by one inbuilt transformations and actions, we no need to write huge coding. So various inner join, partition, PySpark SQL data frames, right? Making da data structured using map, RTDs, PySpark, uh, RTD, PySpark show, row class, select, collect uh, with column renamed where, order by group join union one by one all this uh, apis right with uh, working examples PySpark sql functions aggregate functions window functions date functions json right read right and built-in functions right when expression lit translate overlay two time stamp percentage rank count distinct row number rank dense rank type lit right all this and PySpark external sources working with SQL statements, Hive integration, working with CSV, JSON, transformations and auctions on data frames, narrow and wide transformations, handling nulls, writing data back to external sources, deployment modes, local and cluster, PySpark applications, stages and tasks, driver and executor, replying Spark applications to cluster, streaming integration with Kafka and PySpark, machine learning library, right? So all this uh, in brief, right? In depth, we'll be discussing about entire data analytics with how to pen Spark. Different APIs given and with many working examples, right? Fine. Yeah. So uh, I'll be briefing about the Spark features, advantages, how it is used in the real time, right? In the tomorrow session, right? So this is what the course content. So every session will be video recorded. You will be getting the recorded videos of it. <clears throat> and the clear notes will be provided, right? Fine. So this is, this, this is a weekend batch. Yes, give me a minute. Give me a second, right? I'll just come back with your queries. Uh, so on Saturday, it will be like two to two and a half hours. Sunday, it will be two to two and a half hours, right? Five hours per week. So only on Saturdays and Sundays, it's a weekend batch. Yes. Fine. So it's totally of 12 weekends, right? 12 weekends. In depth, in brief, we'll be discussing and uh, all the software, everything I'll be provided, right? In through Google Drive. And videos also you'll be getting to Google Drive. Notes I'll be forwarding to mail, right? Fine. If you've got any queries, you can go with your queries. And uh, tomorrow also, you can attend the session, right? At same time at 5.30. To see more on this, mostly on Spark, I'll be briefing you, right? Before I go with that, basics of this big data, right?
Yeah. Any queries you have got, you can go ahead with your queries, right? Uh, sir, yeah. can we can we can we have an end project? I mean, live project, something like that. So, so at the last, I'll be showing you the flow right on this. Okay. Uh, so, do we need to have Java and Python programming knowledge before uh, continuing with this course? So here, uh, PySpark means you need to have Spark with Python implementation. You need to have the knowledge on Python, basic Python, right? Yes. So uh, the course is of 12 weeks, right? And the fee structure is 12,000, right? But which uh, constitutes both Hadoop and uh, Spark, right? Previously, they were two separate courses. Now both we come and we are giving for an offer, right? It's like 12,000 for both, like 12 weekends, course for three months. Right, and uh, the Hadoop and especially for Spark, total implementation goes in Python, right? And uh, anyone wants to also, because first uh, uh, one month or one month I'll be discussing on Hadoop, right? Where we won't touch any Python there. So by the time we can update with Python, by the time when we start Spark, right? So people, and if you want uh, Python also, I got, uh, I'll be also handling some Python batches, right? So those who want uh, Python also along with this, right? The, the, the package will be like 15K, right? Along with Python. You can join any of my Python batch, right? Which is going to be started. So, yes. So first one month we'll be having discussion on how to, where we use uh, We'll be discussing about this Hadoop component. By the time we start, you can just update with Python. If anyone not aware about Python, right? Yeah. Yeah. Any other queries, right? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, since uh, I've already joined uh, Python just uh, yesterday, uh, so can uh, can it be clubbed with this course, my Python course? Okay, if you're, yes, if anyone already done, right? So I, it was said, right? It's uh, 15K is the fee, right? So if already, if anyone attending Python, if they want to get updated, right? 15K is the total package. Okay, thank you. And uh, thank normal you. normal only for Hadoop and Spark, if you want, if you already had knowledge on Spark, it's 12K is the fee structure, right? Okay, thank you. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and I just wanted to understand sir, the type of projects uh, like you will be doing a project and uh, uh, will like at the end of this course or at the last two weeks or three weeks, uh, what type of uh, projects will be exposed to or we will be doing on our own? Can we do on our own the project once we complete the course? Yes, yes, totally you'll be getting command on this uh, total uh, Hadoop and Spark related APS, right? When to use what, at for what task, what to be performed, right? So we will we'll be, it, during the course itself, right? We'll be designing many data flows, right? Spark, especially it's a data flow language, right? So many uh, data flows will be designing, right? Many with many working examples. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, you have a separate classes for Python, or it is it, it is there in the class? So no, no, no. A separate uh, timings will be there. Uh, means uh, this Tuesday at seven a.m. in the morning, I'm starting a Python batch, right? Morning seven a.m. Right? Uh, when, when, when it is going to start? On thirty first of this month, after three days. Okay. At morning seven a.m. Right? At morning seven a.m. There is a Python batch. I'm going to start morning seven a.m. Right? Okay. And uh, 31st of this month. And again, uh, 14th, uh, 14th of this uh, next off for two weeks, right? There is one more batch in 7 p.m., right? I'm going to start. Uh, sir, is, is there no uh, batch for weekend on weekend? Because I'm working professional. Weekdays is not possible for me. So be, most of the weekends I'll be dealing with uh, Spark and Scala and Spark by Spark batches are there. And this data analytic batches mostly this i'll be dealing with but uh, people okay there are some people previously who have joined right if he doesn't have knowledge on python even uh, if you attend the sessions that's fine otherwise following the videos that's fine if you're unable to attend but there are no weekend batches but whenever you have got any queries people will be joining and we'll be asking the queries right anyone or two don't if unable to attend yes 
no 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 weekend batches for python weekend no weekend batches for python but uh, for this only we have got the weekend batches for so this timing will not change right or it will, no, it this will timing, change this, this timing won't change i have got other uh, batches for another time this will okay. be no, because this is convenient so that's why if it changes then my schedule will change yes yes okay so are we covering the installation steps also what is it installation steps yeah yeah how to install on windows how to install on linux and how to work on this anaconda jupiter spy, spider pycharm all this i'll be discussing right okay and uh, i heard like sig and uh, yarn is out of scope so nowhere there is sig uh, uh, and we are not we are not discussing sig right okay and what about deployment like yarn so architecture so that is also no more so so uh, here flow something kind of thing here is Pig, pig, yeah, Apache pig is. Uh, we are not discussing that pig. Apache pig is not discussed. So oh, other okay. components. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yarn architecture will be discussing. Yeah, only the architectural part. Okay, and okay. deployment oh. means like uh, nowadays they are using Airflow. So uh, so instead of yarn, so nowhere they are using yarn architecture also. So at the so, last, I'll I'll be providing that knowledge on that. So it's and yes. if you, uh, yes, uh, yes. So you are covering the airflow also, right? So the depth into the deployment option. So this is what you can once again just go through all this course content, right? It will be you will be getting this course content to your mail IDs. So all this uh, in-depth knowledge on PySpark, all the APIs with many working examples, right? Okay. And uh, this PySpark, how it will differ from working in Databricks? Uh, that in cluster mode. So yeah, that also yeah. Uh, how to work with the data bricks. That also I'll be discussing, right? Okay. So and uh, what about Delta Live Tables? Like, what is it? No, no. Delta Live Tables. Uh, no, no, that is not covered here. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks. Okay. Fine. Any other queries, right? Anyone? No. Sir, uh, how to pay the fees? I mean. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, right? In the during the session, they will be. So you will be getting a mail, right? Whatever mail ID you have joined, you will be getting a mail, right? They will be giving the entire uh, the payment processing procedure okay. right? through. Okay. okay. And also tomorrow in the during the class in the chart panel, they will be posting that uh, payment options everything, right? In the chart panel. Okay. Fine. Oh. Okay. Fine. So. <laughs> I'm stopping for now. So we'll continue tomorrow, same time at 5.30. You can follow the same link to see more on this, right? Tomorrow, most of my discussion will be on Spark, PySpark, right? Introduction on this PySpark and the features, the advantages, all this, right? So I'm stopping for now. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank Vijay? You. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, any query? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Already I opted for the Python and the data science and the Right. So already yeah. you that that you, op you, you are opted for Python, data science, and that uh, seven batch, the seven batch. Okay. Seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just yes, yes. People who are it's already said right. Only for Hadoop and Spark, it is like twelve k. And if anyone already doing Python here in this uh, Durga talk, and uh, like if anybody wants to update with Python, right? The fee structure is. 15k if you already have done paid for this python and if you're updating with the python right so your total package will be 15k i'm talking about the timing of the classes timing will be right every every week on saturday this is a this is a weekend batch right this is a weekend batch only no 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 can you hear me yes yes i can hear you right no, you said that full stack will be on weekend batch only. The seven k I seen right there. So this for uh, so all this all these are weekend batches. I'll be running from morning to evening, right? Many weekend batches on Scala, Spark with Scala and Big Data Analytics. Right? Many weekend batches. Yes. Okay. I'll back to you later. Fine. Okay.
so i'm stopping here we'll continue tomorrow same time at 5 30 right yeah so good evening all so myself i'm vijay i hold nearly like 17 plus years of experience which includes nearly eight plus years of experience in how to pen spark and environment right so as part of today's demo i'm going to cover the following topics so before i start can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear whether the screen is visible or not right yes yes sir screen is clear and thank you so what is big data why hadoop and spark and what are the drawbacks we see with the current databases right drawbacks drawbacks with current databases Hadoop and Spark advantages. Hadoop and Spark advantages. Yes. Hadoop and Spark components. Hadoop and Spark. job market fine yes <clears throat> so in today's session mostly i discuss about big data and how to pet in the tomorrow session i'll be discussing mostly on spark and advantages its features what is big data what is big data right the name itself saying right huge volumes of data you see the current how the data is stored currently right uh, data storage units like kbs of data right mbs of data gbs of data gigabytes terabytes petabytes exabytes right zettabytes ettabytes totabytes so on right yes so from tv onwards we see like huge data right or big data right so do you think like okay you should have seen kbs of data mbs of data or even gbs of data right but do you think like a petabytes of data is it getting generated in the current real world right one petabyte equal to right 1024 tbs already one tb is a large storage unit right do you think like a one petabyte right yes one petabyte equal to 1024 tbs So already one TB is a large storage unit, right? One TB is a large storage unit. So here thousand twenty four TBs forms a petabyte, right? It forms a petabyte. So do you think like petabytes of data or exabytes of data is it getting generated in the current world? If so, examples of petabytes of data generation, petabytes of data generation. Talk about a banking sector. Yes, Yes. If you take example of any bank like SBI or HDFC, right? We see within the city we see hundreds of branches. Within the entire state we see thousands of branches, right? Within the entire country, lakhs of branches for SBI. Again, within each branch we call say like millions of customers. Each customer making mil multiple transactions per hour. per day per week per month for each and every transaction need to be stored right so huge data and forget about this everyone aware about the social media like facebook right facebook it has got users not only within the country it has got millions and trillions of users throughout the world what is the data generated by facebook in a minute how many posts and videos are getting circulated what should be the storage capacity to store all that videos in post right so not like 
you see like it's uh, what is the data generated means not in mbs or gbs like terabytes and petabytes of data not only like uh, facebook right today we have got many applications today if we talk like many applications are generating data in petabytes they are generating data in petabytes right one minute if i talk about one minute of transaction right one minute transaction right in a minute how many fb posts facebook posts right what is the data generated by facebook in a minute how many twitter tweets what is the data generated by twitter in a minute what is the data generated by google right google queries right what is the data generated by youtube videos upload youtube videos upload right yes so huge data right what to store all the videos everyone creating their own videos and uploading in the youtube right what should be the storage capacity to store all the videos and everyone right has got millions and trillions of users using email messages right email messages each and every message need to be stored right what should be the storage capacity to store all these messages our bank transactions just now i was talking about the bank transactions or if at all like telecom transactions or like flipkart or amazon transaction right like e-commerce e-commerce transaction everywhere we see like huge data right yes not in gbs or tbs petabytes of data all these applications storing petabytes of data right yes okay coming currently we have got currently we have got a databases right currently we have got databases like uh, you see like databases like oracle mysql right we have got databases like oracle mysql db2 sql server right all these databases right they are used for oltp online transactional processing online transactional process for day-to-day -day operations right but if you see we have got some specialized databases we have got some specialized databases databases used for data warehouse purpose right like uh, we got uh, teradata we have got like teradata and netija teradata netija vortica right yes these are used for OLAP, the data warehouse purpose, right? DWH, data warehouse purpose, right? Online analytical processing, OLAP, online analytical processing, right? Yes. Databases and specialized databases, both are used for, right? Now these databases or specialized databases, they can handle data up to some extent, like uh, databases in GBs of data, specialized databases in DBs of data, right? But to handle petabytes of data, to handle petabytes of data, right? We doesn't see these databases cannot handle like petabytes of data, like as a solution to all these storage level problems, right? Not only storage and also processing level, right? We have got a framework like Hadoop for storage and processing. Later, I'll come back to this. What are the Hadoop and Spark services? But before that, if we talk about this, how this data is getting generated, data generations, and if you see data sources and data types, right? Yes. If you talk, if you take, for example, if you take this is your data available, this is your data, right? Available. This data got generated from the last 50 years. Assume that from 1973 to 2023, right? This is the data which got generated, right? If you compare this data, right? Yes, if you see from 2013 to 2023, last 10 years data comparison with previous 40 years, right? See, previous 40 years. Only like if you see, 
20 percent of the data has got generated from the last previous 40 years and nearly 80 percent of the data what we see currently has been generated from the last 10 to 15 years right the reasons for huge data generation especially from the last 10 to 15 years right because of usage of technology usage of technology usage of smartphones usage of internet right because of which huge data is getting generated from the last 10 to 15 years and also what are the main sources from where this data is getting generated mainly three sources of data right three source if you go back to especially from last 10 to 15 years this data has been but if you see in 1990s or in early 2000s right the data was very less we have got floppy disk we used to carry data in floppy disk 1.44 mb right later you got compact disk dvds or like usbs right so day by day or uh, you see like data increasing the storage systems also increasing in the earlier stages of mobile phones like uh, just 128 mb storage you need to have in 2001 or 2002 at the earlier stages of mobile phones the internal storage was 128 mb or 256 mb right but now even 128 gb is a very small storage so it's data increasing right so the storage systems also need to be increased from where this data is getting generated means mainly three sources right three sources of data you can say like a social data machine data and a transactional data right three types social data machine data and transactional data see what is social data data which got generated from social sites right like amazon like uh, facebook twitter all this right and uh, machine data means the data which got generated by reading or scanning the barcodes rfid chips so whenever you go to any shopping mall right for the items you purchase you will get huge data getting generated right by reading or scanning the barcodes such data we call like machine data and transactional data like day-to-day -day operations like bank transactions telecom transactions right and uh, what are the main types like three types right they are going to occupy three types three types of data three types of data like structured unstructured and semi-structured right structured data semi-structured unstructured right structured data semi-structured data and unstructured data data which is organized in the form of rows and columns in a structured format like uh, db tables like uh, excel files db tables database tables right everything we call like structured semi-structured means they are not fully structured they are not fully unstructured right like xml files json files right unstructured like short messages articles images videos all this comes as unstructured the biggest challenge is uh, like storing and processing this unstructured data today if you see most of the data which is generated occupying this unstructured format right we need to have proper storage and processing systems to handle this unstructured and semi-structured kind of data right if we talk about databases they can handle only structured data they can process the structured data right so uh, so hadoop is a kind of technology which can store and process this huge data right yes so as a solution to all the storage and processing level problems we have got a framework called hadoop we have got a framework called Hadoop. Hadoop is meant for two things. So, 
So Hadoop, if we have got a framework called Hadoop, Hadoop is meant for two things. Hadoop provides two services, storage and processing are forms two things. Storage and processing. Okay. Storage plus processing, right? Yes. So, um, if you take if you talk about any technology, right, they perform either storage or processing. If you talk about C or C plus plus or Java dot net, right, all this they are meant for processing. They are meant for processing, right? And if you talk about uh, Oracle, MySQL, DB two all this meant for storage they are meant for either storage or processing but how do performs both storage and processing but for storage does hadoop use any database internally no hadoop is going with a kind of file system called as hadoop distributed file system and for processing we are going with an execution model called as map reduce and currently we are using spark right yes so for storage, we are using this, for processing, we are using this, right? Both combinedly can store and process. And you may get doubt, right? When Hadoop is able to perform storage and processing, what is the use of the current processing and storage technologies, right? So do you think that they will be away from the market when Hadoop in the market where it can perform storage and processing? No. You need to know where this Hadoop and Spark is used for batch processing, for batch application, right? Means millions and trillions of records go for Hadoop or Spark. For one record or two records, we don't need to go for this Hadoop or Spark, right? You can go with the databases. For online processing, for day-to-day -day operation, go with the databases for one transaction or two transactions. For millions and trillions of records, right? Go for Hadoop, right? Now, coming to this, right? Yes, understood, right? What is big data Hadoop, right? So if I take big data, huge data generation, if I take big data as a problem, huge data generation, then I can say like Hadoop as the solution for it, right? Or if you take like big data as a, talk like big data as a concept, Hadoop as the solution for it. Right. So now you may ask a query, why databases like Oracle is not used for storing Hadoop's data? Drawbacks with the current databases, right? Yeah, drawback with the current databases. So first thing, right? Most of the databases, right? Most of the databases, less storage, very less storage. They can handle in GBs or in TBs, right? GBs or TBs. Mainly, most of the databases, no parallel processing. No parallel processing in most of the databases, right? And uh, if volume increases, right? If volume increases, saying like speed decreases, right? Yes, speed decreases. If volume increases, speed decreases. For example, to justify this, uh, select total amount, sum of amount, right? Total amount from sales one. Sales one is the table, right? It's consisting of 10 records. Assume it has got only 10 records. And uh, see one more query, right? Select uh, sum of amount, right? Sum of amount from sales two. From sales two, it has got like one lakh records. Total amount from sales one, 10 records. Total amount from sales two, 1 lakh records, right? Select, select sum of amount, total amount of, yes. Total 
one crore records. Ten records, one lakh records, one crore records. Ten records, one lakh records, and one crore records. So which query is going to execute faster among these three? Right? Yes, everyone. Either ten records or one lakh or one crore. Which record? Which table like? This or this or this. Which one is going to execute faster? So the first query, right, executes faster because total amount of ten records as compared with one lakh and one crore, right? So query to query as volume increasing, speed decreases first, and uh, if you talk uh, complexity increases, if complexity increases first, speed decreases. Complexity increases, speed decreases. For example, select uh, sum of amount from sales one. Assume this is complex from sales one, right? You got some one lakh records. Assume that you got one lakh records. Next series, uh, select uh, average amount. Uh, select average amount from Sales one, right? Yes. Select sum of amount from sales one, one lakh records. Average amount from sales one, one crore records. So sorry, one lakh only. Assume sales one, same table, right? Select the standard deviation of amount. Standard deviation of amount, right? Standard deviation of amount from Sales one, so all this right has got like one crore records. Sorry, one lakh records. Same sales one only, right? One lakh records. Which query executes faster among these three? Sum of amount from sales one, average amount from sales one, standard deviation of amount from sales one, right? First query again, right? Yes, because. Uh, Average amount is a two-step process. First, sum to be calculated. Next, average to be calculated. Standard deviation is a lot of internal processing required. So again, the first query executes faster as compared with the other two, right? So here, query to query, right? Query to query as well as this. Query to query as complexity increases, speed decreases, right? Yes. And the major drawback with the databases, right? Databases can handle only structured data. Databases can handle only structured data. They can handle only structured data. Cannot handle unstructured or semi-structured kind of data. For example, for example, if you want to take reviews for a particular movie, right? So the table name is reviews. User two, user three, hundred users, right? Hundred users. Uh, review, right? Yes. Movie is good. First person saying movie is good. Second person saying movie is not good. Okay. For example. Think that they are giving reviews in the form of ones and zeros. First person saying one, second person saying zero, one zero. In this way, the <coughs> reviews are given in the form of ones and zeros. One means good, zero indicates bad. Can you write an SQL query to count the number of ones and zeros? Means how many saying it's good and bad, right? We can write an SQL query for this, right? Count aggregation. Select uh, review wise. Count review wise count from which table reviews table group by review review wise count from reviews group by review what is output right yes 
zeros and ones right one and zero what is the count 90 people saying the movie good 10 people saying the movie bad right assume this kind of structured data okay but if the reviews won't be given in the zeros and ones right they give the reviews in their own text format first person saying movie is good second person saying movie is not good so in this way they are giving in their own text format they are giving the review in their own text format right giving the review in their own text format right so here 90 people saying movie is good and 10 people saying the movie is bad right now can you write an sql query right for this uh, if they are writing in the text format how many people saying good how many people saying it's not good right we cannot write a query even based on keyword count if you try to see right if you want to count based on keyword still it gives wrong computation because even not good has got good within it right so the major drawback with the databases can handle only structured data but if you talk about this hadoop advantages right hadoop advantages first thing unlimited data storage unlimited data storage unlimited data storage and secondly very high speed processing very high speed processing and uh, can handle all varieties of data can handle all varieties unlimited data storage very high speed processing can handle can handle all varieties of data right okay open source no licensing required right open source Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, can handle all varieties of data, open source, no licensing required. Okay, unlimited data storage, right? Unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, right? So if you see examples, Yahoo has conducted a test, right? Yahoo has conducted a test to check the speed of various databases uh, it has taken a table yahoo has taken a table right of 100 tv it has taken a table of 100 tv right consisting of 1024 columns task right task Yeah, task right sorting based on 16 columns sorting based on 16 columns right what is the time taken by various databases time taken by various databases first one right uh, oracle has taken nearly 3.5 days to process this right MySQL, right? MySQL, it has taken nearly six days to process it. Six days, right? And if you talk like uh, specialized databases like Teradata used for data warehouse purpose can handle TBs of data just taken 4.5 hours, right? Another specialized databases like Netija, Netija, right? Right. It has just taken three hours to process this. 
और फाइनली हॉडो प्राइस has just taken 3.4 minutes 3.4 minutes and latest version of photo has taken just 1.2 minutes right if you talk about spark it will take seconds right hadoop spark speed is more faster than hadoop so this what is the hadoop hadoop speed right compared with other things where they have taken days and hours hadoop has taken just minutes of time that is hadoop is proven in the market processing point of view right and even in the storage point of view also hadoop is present right so you may okay processing point of view like a very high speed processing today if you talk like most of the projects like etl kinds of projects they're migrating towards hadoop and spark environment right yes you may ask like why databases like oracle why I have got the series query right why databases databases like oracle databases like oracle cannot support unlimited storage cannot support unlimited storage right yes why databases like oracle cannot support unlimited storage why only hadoop can perform why not this thing hadoop follows master and slave architecture single master and multiple slaves multiple slaves means a single master and multiple slave systems but here uh, there is a limitation for this for this limitations right databases and mem max limit max limit on the number of slaves max limit on the number of slaves like if you talk like oracle right if you can have maximum 256 slave systems 256 nodes are slaves right slave systems beyond that it cannot right it cannot support data once this 256 slaves are systems gets filled it cannot support data further if we talk like mysql just it can support only 54 slaves supports only 54 slaves yes mysql express right mysql express it can support nearly 256 slaves and db2 DB2, right? It supports nearly like 256 slaves. Oracle, MySQL, MySQL Express, DB2, SQL Server, right? Yes, SQL Server, right? Like 256 slaves. Right. So, they can support only up to 256 beyond that they cannot support right but we have got some specialized databases like terra data right terra data it can support nearly 512 slaves right systems for storing its data and uh, netija netija right it can also support right 512 slaves vertica also can support nearly 5 to 12 slaves for storing this data okay mysql mysql express db2 sql server teradata netija vertica but teradata and netija now they are supporting nearly 1024 systems are slaves right to store this data and netija also supporting 1024 right 1024 slaves for storing its data right but still i cannot say like they are storing unlimited storage is possible no once they get filled they cannot support data further but but there is no limit there is no limit on the number of slaves on the number of slaves that hadoop can have right 
but there is no limit on the number of states that Hadoop can have. Unlimited number of slaves, right? So that's it. So Yahoo, when first time implemented Hadoop, Yahoo, when first time implemented Hadoop, went with 4,000 slaves. 4,000 slaves for storing its data. And currently it is going with currently Currently, Yahoo using nearly 12,000 slaves or nodes, right, for storing its data. Facebook, right? Facebook, when first time implemented Hadoop, went with 8,000 slaves for storing its data. Currently, it is going with, right? Currently, it is going with 12,000 slaves for store. sorry. 42,000 slaves, right? 42,000 slaves for storing its data, right? Means there is no limit like uh, databases going with 256 or 512, but here they can go with the thousands. There is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can have, yes. right? Yes. Vijay, uh, sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, can you please repeat uh, what is the slaves and nodes are? Yes, yes, that I'll be discussing, right? So one second. See, Hadoop follows a single master, multiple slaves. Master slave architecture. So Hadoop, Hadoop or Spark follows, right? Master slave, not client server architecture, master slave. Single master means uh, these are multiple slaves. Slave nodes is there. This is master node. These are slave nodes. Group of nodes, CPUs. Group of nodes are CPUs. They are connected in a network. One master node and all are nodes are slaves, nothing but systems, CPUs. One master node and multiple slave nodes. So in Hadoop, if there is a file, in Hadoop data is stored in the form of files, the data f1.txt think that your system or this slave one tb one tb one tb means each system storage is one tb one tb one tb slaves nothing but system nodes master node means it's a one system slaves and multiple systems right so each system capacity one tb my file size is two tb this 2TB cannot fit into any of this file, right? Any of this system, it cannot be accommodated by any system, right? So in Hadoop, data is going to be split into smaller parts. It is going to be split into smaller parts and will be first part in one system, second one in another system, this in another system. Means distributed storage, you see. The data is going to get distributed across multiple systems and processed by multiple systems. Two advantages, what we can see. Huge, da huge data file can be accommodated. Secondly, as it is distributed across multiple systems, they are processed parallelly. They are processed parallelly, right? Yes. Okay, they are processed parallelly. Okay, so we'll see very high speed, right? Because a single file distributed across multiple systems and it's processed parallelly, very high speed. See, if work done by one system, work done by multiple systems, means work done by one person and work done by multiple persons. You can see that uh, speed, right? Yes, that's what high speed. Okay. So these are the systems, means Hadoop, horizontally unlimited number of slaves, horizontally, you can keep on adding the systems or slaves, right? Slaves means systems. We can have any number of systems. There is no limit. But for databases, there is a limit. Yeah. How many systems can be? And uh, Yahoo Facebook went with 42,000 systems for storing its data. Initially, it was using 8,000. Currently, it is using this. Means there is no limit on the number of systems that Hadoop can have. 
slaves right you can have but there is a limit in other data basically so storage point of view it is proven and the processing point of view it is proven in the market right yes understood right what is the hadoop why hadoop right and drawbacks with the data basics hadoop advantages right and uh, uh, most of this uh, if you today if you see most of the applications uh, generating huge data so to be stored and to be processed this big data tools are mostly preferred right yes <clears throat> one second now see this advantages and uh, as compared some tests were conducted by yahoo to check the speed of this databases where hadoop has taken minutes of time where other things they have taken like days and hours it has taken minutes of time and why databases like oracle or this cannot support means they have limit on the number of slaves fine so if you see uh, and uh, if you talk about spark right spark a very high speed processing technology right used currently it uh, has got great demand in the market the tool has got great demand about this uh, spark right the advantages its features all this i'll be demonstrating in the tomorrow session right but as what is the code structure right what is that course content we'll be discussing right i'll just show you what we'll be discussing as part of this course some hadoop component and spark right so like big data hadoop introduction why hadoop need of hadoop data sources and hdfs hadoop distributed file system we need to have the knowledge on this hdfs file system it doesn't use databases as it got some drawback map reduce execution model right when hadoop and a scoop sql plus hadoop first two characters of this and last three characters of it form scoop right import or export operations how to bring the data how to pull the data from different databases processing it and after processed the data need to be again taken to databases import and export operations it's not for processing it's just for importing data and exporting data right and filtering transforming all this yarn yet another resource negotiator so from uh, hadoop to version onwards we got many architectural changes yet another resource negotiator and as a hadoop and spark developer you need to have the idea about at least one no sql database not only sql for schema less behavior random access no sql advantage is uh, record to record different number of fields or columns can be maintained in sql first record to last record same number of columns need to be maintained right but in no sql my first record with three fields second record with five fields third record with 10 fields right record to record different number of fields can be maintained right and as part of our course are we discussing hbase one no sql database hbase and hbase data modeling and crude operations and uh, high end hbase integration and next the important uh, hadoop component like hive which is used for data warehouse for we use a language called hql here loading data and making the data structured and creating tables internal tables external tables we working with unstructured xml json data working with url weblog data unions joins udf udaf udtfs right non partition partition table indexing bucketing partitioning static partitioning dynamic partitioning right and now coming to this spice spark right spark with python so up to now that is what the hadoop components that we'll be discussing right now pi spark pi spark real time use cases pi spark session pi spark context spark context parallelized repartitioning broadcast variables pi spark rtd computations rtd uh, persistence or persistence features options pi spark core computation and increasing the number of partitions groupings and aggregations single grouping single aggregation multi grouping multiple aggregations group by key reduce by key various actions and transformations right various one by one actions and transformations count by key count by value sort by key so one by one inbuilt transformations and actions we no need to write huge coding 
so various inner join partition by spark sql data frames right making the da data structured using maps rtds by spark uh, rtd by spark show row class select collect uh, with column renamed where order by group join union one by one all these uh, apis right with uh, working examples by spark sql functions aggregate functions window functions date functions json right read right and built-in functions right when expression lit translate overlay two timestamp percentage rank count distinct row number rank dense rank type lit right all this and by spark external sources working with sql statements hive integration working with csv json transformations in auctions on data frames narrow and wide transformations handling nulls writing data back to external sources deployment modes local and cluster by spark applications stages and task driver and executor replying spark applications to cluster streaming integration with kafka and by spark machine learning library right so all this uh, in brief right in depth we'll be discussing about entire data analytics with hadoop and spark different apis given and with many working examples right fine yeah so uh, i'll be briefing about the spark features advantages how it is used in the real time right in the tomorrow session right so this is what the course content so every session will be video recorded you will be getting the recorded videos of it <clears throat> and the clear notes will be provided right fine so this is this this is a weekend batch yes give me a minute you give me a second right i'll just come back with your queries uh, so on saturday it will be like two to two and a half hours sunday it will be two to and a half hours right five hours per week so only on saturday and sundays it's a weekend batch yes fine so it's totally of 12 weekends right 12 weekends in depth in brief we'll be discussing and uh, all the softwares everything i'll be provided right in through google drive and videos also you'll be getting to google drive notes i'll be forwarding through mail right fine. if you got any queries you can go with your queries and uh, tomorrow also you can attend the session right at same time at 5 30 to see more on this mostly on spark i'll be briefing you right before i go with that basics of this big data right yeah any queries you have got you can go ahead with your queries right uh, sir uh, can we can we can we have an any project i mean live project something like that so so at the last i'll be showing you the flow right on this okay uh, so do we need to have java and python programming knowledge before uh, continuing with this course so here uh, PySpark means you need to have spark with python implementation you need to have the knowledge on python basic python right yes so uh, the course is of 12 weeks right and the fee structure is 12000 right for which uh, constitutes both hadoop and uh, spark right previously they were two separate courses now both we come and we are giving for an offer right it's like 12000 for both like 12 weekends course for three months right and uh, the hadoop and especially for spark total implementation goes in python right and uh, anyone wants to also because first uh, uh, one month or one month i'll be discussing on hadoop right where we won't touch any python there so by the time we can update with python by the time when we start spark right so people and if you want uh, python also i got uh, i'll be also handling some python batches right so those who want uh, python also along with this right they, they the package will be like 15k right along with python you can join any of my python batch right which is going to be started say so, yes so first one month we'll be having discussion on how to where we use uh, We'll be discussing about this Hadoop component. By the time we start, you can just update with Python. If anyone not aware about Python, right? Yeah. yeah any other queries, right? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, since uh, I've already joined uh, Python just uh, yesterday, uh, so can uh, can it be clubbed with this course, my Python course? 
okay if you are yes if anyone already done right so I, it was said right it's uh, 15 k is the key right so if already is anyone attending python if they want to get updated right 15 k is the total package okay thank you and uh, normal you. normal only for hadoop and spark if you want if you already had knowledge on spark it's 12 k is the fee structure right Okay, thank you. And, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and I just wanted to understand sir, the type of projects, uh, like you will be doing a project and uh, uh, will like at the end of this course or in the last two weeks or three weeks, uh, what type of uh, projects will be exposed to or we will be doing on our own? Can we do on our own the projects once we complete the course? Yes, yes, totally. You'll be getting command on this uh, total uh, Hadoop and Spark related APIs, right? When to use what, at for what task, what to be performed, right? So, we'll, we'll be it, during the course itself, right? We'll be designing many data flows, right? Spark, especially, it's a data flow language, right? So, many uh, data flows will be designing, right? Many with many working examples. Okay, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, you have a separate classes for Python or it is it, it is there in the class? So, no, no, no. A separate uh, timings will be there. Uh, means uh, this Tuesday at 7 a.m. in the morning, I'm starting a Python batch, right? Morning 7 a.m., right? Uh, when? When when it is going to start? On 31st of this month, after three days. Okay. At morning 7 a.m., right? At morning 7 a.m., there is a Python batch I'm going to start morning 7 a.m., right? Okay. And uh, 31st of this month. And again, uh, 14th, uh, 14th of this uh, next after two weeks, right? There is one more batch in 7 p.m., right? I'm going to start. Uh, sir, is, is there no uh, batch for weekend on weekend because I'm working professionally? Weekdays is not possible for me. So we, most of the weekends I'll be dealing with uh, Spark and Scala and Spark by Spark batches are there. And this data analytic batches mostly this i'll be dealing with but uh, people okay there are some people previously who have joined right if he doesn't have knowledge on python even uh, if you attend the sessions that's fine otherwise following the videos that's fine if you're unable to attend but there are no weekend batches but whenever you have got any queries people will be joining and we'll be asking the queries right any one or two days right if unable to attend yes uh, no, no, we, no, 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 no weekend batches for Python. Yeah, weekend, right. No weekend batches for Python, but uh, for this only we have got the weekend batches. Sir, sir this time.